I'm Lynette Zhang, Chief Market Analyst here at ITM Trading, a full service physical gold and silver company, really specializing in custom strategies that help you survive and even thrive through the reset that has already begun. And let me tell you, if you don't hold it, you don't own it. And I cannot emphasize that enough because that's what we really specialize in is protecting 100% of your wealth and assets by something that has no counterparty risk. Because these markets, make no mistake about it, they're all counterparty risk. We had a bunch of questions yesterday, um, and so we're, I'm just going to dive into uh, questions today. Now, this first question was submitted to our consultant, one of our consultants. And, you know, if you're working with somebody and you have a question, I mean, I'm sure they can answer any questions you have. But if there's something you want me to answer, just ask them and they'll get it to me. And uh, the question is, I heard Lynette say that she is receiving Social Security benefits in case Social Security goes away because of UBI. And maybe those already taking Social Security will be grandfathered in. At 63, is a good idea that I go ahead and file for so Social Security for the same reason? Well, I'm actually not yet taking Social Security because they're going to tax it. So it's like not worth the effort. And I honestly, I'm going to be honest with you. I hate all that stuff, Medicare, social security. I mean, I definitely am not counting on any of that to make sure that any of my income or medical needs are taken care of. And a big part of the strategy is so that you don't have to depend on those, those, whatever they want to call them. Um, now, do I think that those could go away because of UBI, universal basic income? Absolutely. And do I think universal basic income is coming soon? Absolutely. There is a chance that some of that would be grandfathered. So, you know, I don't know. Honestly, I can't, I don't know enough about Social Security and that whole process to be able to give you an educated answer. I know that next year, if I take it, it's not taxed. But honestly, I think the social security system and others need it more than more than I do. So I don't even want to, if I had a druther, I wouldn't do any of that crap if they would give me an option. So therefore, I'm sorry, I, I can't really give you a good answer on that. But if you're eligible for social security, and you're not working and you can take it at 63. I mean, this is squirrely. What, what I do for my retirement is definitely not count on these clowns. I definitely have my gold and silver set aside to sustain my current standard and cash to sustain my current standard of living. But because the cash is the first line of defense, because that's what people recognize the most. Then we go into the silver for my day-to-day -day stuff and some gold for property taxes and larger uh, expenses like maybe some medical expenses, though there are some other ways that you can handle that in the strategy as well, depending upon how much you need. But truthfully, what I'm depending upon for my income is to take the growth gold that I buy and convert it into income producing assets when they are dirt cheap. Right now, those income producing assets are at nosebleed level. So I don't really want to touch them. However, that will not remain that way forever. And so that's what the growth gold part of my portfolio is about. Because that way, I don't have to worry about if Washington does this or does that. It's not relevant to me. Plus, with a portfolio, a, a fiat money portfolio like stocks and bonds and mutual funds and annuities and those kinds of things, when I first became a stockbroker, honestly, nobody ever talked about you running out of your money. Because at that point, you were getting decent 
interest rates on your fiat money portfolio, treasuries, those kinds of things. Today, in this zero interest rate environment, they can't raise rates. Now, I am paying a lot of attention and, and we might be talking about rates soon because they're, they have been training, trending upward. But with this mountain of debt on here and all the conversions that are going to be happening here that, that started, which I still can't find anything on, and that's happening in 2021, they can't raise rates. And that means that anybody that needs income needs to think about other alternatives. And I built that into the strategy. So, you know, you're talking to a consultant, he should be able to give you some good advice on that. And uh, Peter Davila asks, is our money safe in the banks right now? Probably right now it is because they're still supporting the system. And remember, there was a run that, that got started in March, and then they just printed a whole bunch of money to quash that run. So right now, yes, but I still wouldn't have more than the, which I know the FDIC insurance is a joke. But they'll print the money to honor it. I'm pretty sure they would. So I definitely wouldn't have more than that in there. And you have to wonder, you know, how much cash are, are you holding in there? For me personally, and that's why we have to customize the strategies because your circumstances are going to be different than mine. And my goals may be different than yours. Since I'm running a business and I'm paying salaries, there is a certain level of cash that I have to, or money in the, in the banks that I have to maintain. I also maintain a certain level of cash outside of the system because I can always make a deposit. But uh, the truth of the matter is, is I don't hold in the banking system any more than I absolutely need to. So once a certain threshold is breached above what I need to run my business, then, I, I mean, automatically that gets converted. And a lot of times I would convert if if it's about the, it depends on what it's about. If it's about the business, then that's where I would do some emergency gold like I talked to you about the other day. You know, and I'm glad I bought it when I did. I hope everybody else did the same thing. So, um, yeah, at, at the moment, you know, your purchasing power isn't safe in the banks ever, but is your principal safe in the banks for the moment? But when that switch occurs, you know, into the digital system, you better not have any more in there than you're really willing to lose. And you probably shouldn't have more in there than you can afford to or you're willing to lose right now because you're not getting paid any interest. So even if you had it in cash in a safe deposit box, to me, that's probably a better, safer place because that would also be cash in the wild. In other words, cash that does not yet have the chip in it. Although, you know, I, I haven't heard that they're putting the chips in it. That was just the plan uh, from the IMF. So I don't know that they're doing that exactly now. But, and Pierre Julian Renard asks, what's a good gold silver cash ratio to own right now? Again, that depends on your personal circumstance and your goals and what you have available. Um, for me, you know, there's a certain, and, and understand too, I'm still working. So if I weren't working and I had need of income and maybe I was generating income like some of you may be doing from dividends, which would be very challenging these days, then, you know, you want to take a look at that. So that's a really personal thing, Pierre, and it really is based upon what your circumstances are. I personally have enough cash to make sure that I can cover payrolls and also to make sure that I can cover uh, for my children and myself a certain, you know, like three months worth of my income needs. But beyond that, 
No, I, I don't. But then again, I'm working and I'm still generating income. If you're not, then that changes. So you need to talk to somebody about your circumstances and then they can help you determine what that gold silver cash ratio should be. I can tell you without a doubt, as far as gold and silver is concerned, silver too, for me, is based upon my children's and my current uh, cost of living. So there's a certain percentage that I like in silver for barterability to make sure I can always put a tank of gas in the car or if I needed to buy a loaf of bread or something like that. By far, by far, 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 I couldn't even really tell you what the ratio is because that's not how I build my portfolio, but I have more gold than I have anything because that is what they reset the currency against. It is the primary currency metal. But depending upon what I'm trying to accomplish, I have emergency gold, which is more, for me, more short term. If I need it, bam, that's what I'm selling first and converting it to fiat. I have my growth gold. So I have my barter. Actually, there's four categories. I have my barterable gold for my property taxes. I have my emergency gold for short-term emergencies. I have my growth gold to convert into those income-producing assets. And then I have my dynastic gold, my legacy gold, to be passed down through the generations so that they always have a foundation of wealth. But by far, I can tell you, is my silver position is much bigger than my cash position. And my gold position is much, much, much bigger than either one of those. And then Doug asks, is XRP a good buy? Well, you know, any of the digital or cryptocurrencies, they're a market because this is a created market but they are absolutely intangible. And I don't think that the dust has even begun to settle yet on government digital currencies, which is what they're going to push. So they may allow that as a market, but is it a good buy? Well, what's its utility? I mean, that's my biggest question with these cryptocurrencies. What is the utility? And there's a program that I'm thinking about uh, doing. It was actually Megan's idea, and I thought it was a really good idea. You know, sound bites, right? If you listen to some of these commercials where they're talking about these digital currencies, these cryptocurrencies, I mean, their conclusion makes no sense to me. Honestly, it doesn't. So I'm not buying XRP, but everybody's got to do what they're comfortable doing. And uh, Nick Braun asks, is GGN Game Co? Well, that is the stock symbol for Gabelli Gold Fund. That's what GGN is. And that is, I think, I'm pretty sure that's a mutual fund. I mean, you guys know, I prefer, without a doubt, gold and silver that is physical in my possession that runs no counterparty risk. I don't want a fund. I don't want gold stocks at this point. This is not always going to be true. Well, I probably, I will always maintain a position in physical gold and silver, but depending upon what's going on and where we are, then, then what I hold and how much of it I hold is going to vary. We are in the middle or we have begun the reset or restructuring of the society, the economy, as well as the financial system. So that's why I am so heavily involved in it. I love tangible assets in this environment. That stuff, it's not tangible. Now, the next question, the OK Corral, will you give us some info on the Utah gold back? Well, the Utah gold back, and they're bringing it out in other states as well, but it is a physical bill and it's laminated. And in each bill, there is one one thousandth, or in a one gold back, there's one one thousandth of an ounce of gold. And that is part of what is beautiful about gold is that you can stretch it so thin and so 
that's the information. They have different denominations, but it's a bill that has physical gold embedded in it. And Margie Elmore asks, how might the government confiscate metals and how would they know you have it? Well, well they're, like everything else, their preference is for you to volunteer. So the way that they are most likely to do it is, well, we talked yesterday about India, but uh, the way that I think they're most likely to do it, because all the new U.S. gold coins, the Eagles, they have a $50 face value on them. And the official U.S. price of gold is $42.22. So some people think that they would confiscate at that level. But I'm thinking that's not, there, they, there would be too much outrage. And so I don't think that they would do that. But we'll, we'll find out in the future. However, the way that I think it's most likely to look, since it's easy to manipulate the spot gold market, which is just a contract, would be for them to, let's say, spots trading at 3000 bucks an ounce. Okay, turn in your gold, and we'll give you $6,000 an ounce for it. And most people not understanding fundamental value, its true value, or how they reset it, just like they did in 33, would go, well, wow, look at this. It's only worth 3000 but they're going to pay us 6000 for it, so hey, rock and roll hoochie coo. I've even had people say to me, but Lynette, they didn't just take the gold, they paid for the gold back in 33. Yeah, and after they did that, bam, they revalued and revalued gold in terms of currency and devalued all of that currency that they paid people for. So frankly, to me, that's a garbage argument. But um, they're going to want you to easily comply and hey, most of the physical gold in this country is held in IRAs anyway. So, you know, they do a big, huge sweep, but I think they're going to try and entice you to cooperate and get you to not mind that they've confiscated it until it's too late for you to do anything about it. And quite honestly, that's why I personally only buy the collectible gold coins because you cannot hold them in an IRA. And what happens is, you know, the, in that category, you have people that have paid $8 million or more for one ounce of gold. And I'm kind of thinking that anybody that could pay $8 million for one ounce of gold either writes the laws or has the ability, like we just saw with Uber and Lyft and the law in California, to influence those that write the laws. So that, for me, is where my level of comfort is. And also, thanks to my Uncle Al, who he was able to hold at least 3,000 ounces of gold legally when it was illegal to hold more than five ounces. So exactly because that's how I think they would do it. And then how would they know you have it? Well, see, that's why they don't like gold. Because look, when you buy gold from a dealer, they've got to take all your information, you have an invoice or what have you, but it's physical. So personally, when somebody has a baby, I have a tendency to give them silver. And when somebody gets married, I have a tendency to give them gold. So they can't really track it. It's physical. There's nothing embedded in it that enables them to track it. So who's to say? That's why they need to entice you. I, I don't think they're going to go knocking on the doors because there's probably not 1% of the population in this country that even owns gold. So they're more likely, in my opinion, they are more likely to inspire you by putting a big number on it as compared to the spot market contract number to get you to want to participate and not complain when you do participate. I'm not going to be one of those. And uh, Big Bala asks, hi, Lynette, I love your content. Thank you. What will happen to your debt, such as mortgage, 
when there's a reset and if the dollar's devalued? That's such a good question because what happens when they do the reset, they revalue the fiat that has no value against gold that has all value. And so what happens is the gold will then express in terms of fiat somewhere near its fundamental value. So this is exactly the same strategy that the government uses to settle their debt with dollars in this country, but this is true globally, with fiat money that has less and less and ultimately no value. So that's what's going to happen to my mortgage because right now, huh, that gold is severely undervalued. But that won't remain that way when it benefits, when the government, the central banks are either ready to or forced to do that big overnight reset that everybody thinks when I say the term reset, everything's overnight. It's slow until it's fast. But when that piece occurs, bam, I will take a little bit, however much of my gold that I need to and convert it and pay off that mortgage. Done and done easy peasy. And that also means that the properties that are mortgaged are a whole lot cheaper because you've got the goal to, to offset that property. And uh, Gosha Truju, I'm sorry if I mispronounced your name. What are your thoughts on business workers compensation after the reset if it happens? Well, it will happen, Gosha. I promise you it will. And on business workers' compensation, anything that you get in fiat is not going to have any value. It already has 98% less value that in terms of purchasing power than it did before. And if you look at the cost of food and medicine, you know, medical care and education and all those things that we do on a daily basis, they're really going up at least somewhere. And I, I did a piece recently on it and the average inflation by state, I think the lowest one was something like 8% and then up from there. So I again, I would not be counting on any fiat money to be able to really pay my bills and to really uh, make things okay. This is why you need to have physical gold and silver. And Gigi Storm asks, doesn't an SI mint mark legitimize the silver round? No. Mm -mm. It would be the states that make gold and silver legal tender. So that would legitimize it. But I'm not really sure what you mean by that. Because if it's a silver round, then it's 99% pure. It's an ounce of silver. And the difference between physical gold and silver and all of these contracts and everything else is that they have the broadest base of buyer. So the fact that it's silver itself is what makes it legitimate. The fact that it's gold itself because it is what makes it legitimate. Gold and silver in any form, any form, eh, well, that's costume, but still, it's physical at its base, it's monetary, I'm sorry, it's monetary at its base, regardless of the form. So I love silver rounds. I have a bunch of silver rounds. I have junk silver, dimes, quarters, half dollars, silver dollars, and I even have silver American eagles. So, and, and there's something really funny and wonky that's happening between the mint you know, and the markets right now. And when anything looks wonky to me, I know that can't last. So the silver, the mint has silver, one ounce silver eagles at $67, just the regular silver eagles, but they're unavailable. Well, I just bought some to tell you the truth. And I didn't even pay marginally that. Bought them through ITM trading. Of course I did. And it wasn't even marginally near that. Do I think that's going to last? Well, what is that big discrepancy telling you? I mean, yes, there'll always be a little discrepancy because we work with Mint Direct dealers and they're buying it from the Mint and, and the wholesalers are really the biggest market for the Mint. So typically prices on the Mint are more. 
However, this is ridiculous. I mean, it's like, I think double or something like that. That's ridiculous. So there's something going on. Um, but I love silver and that's it. We're going to pick up more questions here shortly, but I just looked at the time and, um, today, this afternoon, in fact, I'm going to be on good as gold with Brian and Daryl. And I'm really excited about that because we had just such a good time. I had such a good time with these guys. They have such great questions. Uh, and so be looking for that. We'll let you know when that posts. And next week, I'm going to be on with my favorite little millennial, Dustin Nemos. And, you know, really, people say things about millennials, but they're our hope. Because they're our first generation that have really been brought up with this technology. And they're the ones that are going to make a difference in what happens next as we move forward in this digital economy. So if you have any questions about this or anything else, make sure you send them into our blog, itmtrading.com forward slash blog. Or if you're working with, with one of our consultants, you know, you can give the question to them and then they'll make sure that I get it. If you like this, please give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed already, make sure to do so and hit that button. And then, you know, we'll let you know every time we're going to air. And we do that pretty regularly. So it is 100% time to cover your assets. And here at ITM Trading, we do that with the Wealth Shield that covers all those things that we talked about today. So sustainability, and we've got some really good things in the works. I think you guys are going to love the new stuff that's about to come out. So very excited. Personally, I'm really excited about it. So until tomorrow, because we'll, I'm going to do more questions, please be safe out there. Bye-bye.